Welcome back to another episode of Money Loss. Hope you are staying safe out there in these crazy times. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you um, basically what I do to hand raise um, young pigeons. Um, I have shown it quite a few times in videos, but um, I, it's something I definitely keep getting asked a lot about. So we're just going to go into it pretty quickly, give you a rough rundown, um, and then we'll just you know go into the loft back into the loft and we'll feed all the other birds and check up on them so it's going to be very straightforward very simple um, I never ever take young birds away from their parents unless there's a reason um, this guy uh, my friend bred him and he lives quite a fair way away I'm not going to see him for a long time um, so basically when I was up there the other day I picked up this guy because he bred him for me um, and that's the only reason we've got him now it's just I'm not you know, I'm gonna get him tame him up and he's gonna be one of our you know very tame birds um, and another thing is realistically um, taking them away and hand raising them if you do it properly it's no different than their actual parents contrary to what a lot of people will probably try and say in the comments um, if you do it properly there is no issues we do um, if you do remember Raven's baby which was they were very young when he left and Storm uh, Snow couldn't look after those babies and we had to take them in hand raise them um, basically the grizzled cockbird from there he has raced 80% of a full season and he's been a clockbird a couple of times in those races and those races have been out to six or seven hundred kilometers so he's doing very well for a hand raised bird and he's definitely beating a lot of other birds that are not hand raised he's actually beating a heap of them to be honest he's doing quite well um he hasn't won a race yet but he's placed a few times quite well he's been clock bird so i wouldn't be put off by the fact that you're going to disadvantage the bird by hand raising them we actually hand raised that grizzle cock bird from a very very young age he would have just been coming off crop milk he would have probably would have been eight days maybe but we didn't have a choice this guy um anyway we'll get on with that anyway because I'm just making the point that, um, you know, you're not going to disadvantage your bird if you do it correctly. These guys are very strong. And this guy's only been in here probably a day or two. And you can see how quickly he comes around to thinking, you know, look, my hand is food. This is the mum, see? Come on. Um, he is actually, his crop is empty at the moment. Um, and that is for a purpose. You want to start off, if you can get the crop empty and then you feed them they're going to be like this a, a, a little switch will flick and they'll instantly come around like this um, and then after that you just bulk feed them as much as possible and i'll show you how to do that now the worst thing you you want to make sure the crop is always full um, just because if you haven't and you're not there's you know we'll go into that a bit more in the future but in this video but if you're not feeding enough their actual toes will go retarded and they'll curl um, that is because they're not getting enough food so you need to make sure they've got enough food and you need to make sure that they've got a nest bowl liner like this because their legs will spay which is basically where their legs don't have any muscles they don't develop properly and they can't walk and that's not good for them either so i'll go in and show you how i feed them predominantly i use a lot of peas just because they are super easy to feed them with um, and then i do mix it in with a few other bits and pieces here and also I have a little bowl of grit um, and I put a little bit of grit in there when I finish feeding him every time um, just to help him digest the food but I'll show you how I get food into him um, you got to be a little bit rough with these guys they don't mind it but it's you just want to get the food into them all right you ready Come on. I just usually probably grab about that many like that and in my hands hands here and then open the mouth and just drop the peas in and you'll see that he eats them quite happily and it doesn't take long you can see how excited he gets over it this is my preferred side I'll see if I can turn it around a bit more come on it's probably a bit harder to do it around this other way but um, in, in a see they will open their their beak to let you put the food in now that he's he knows what's going on he's all over it come on oh. he 
you just get them a bit excited, so you're a bit excited. And this is a noise he's making because he wants to be fed, he's hungry. He knows that I'm going to feed him. Go, go, go. And you can feel too down the front there that the peas are, peas are probably the best because they just roll down and slide in there full of protein. There's, you know, there's no issue. You can see how many seeds I'm getting in there at once. And it makes this job super easy because you're not... If you have to sit here and individually put safflower or wheat in there, oh, it's a hard, hard job. And I see a lot of people putting up all these contraptions and all this kind of stuff, but this is by far the best way to me. And I've hand-raised a lot of pigeons throughout my life. A lot of my baby pigeons I first got under the train bridge as a kid, I used to hand-raise them up, and I tell you what, they, they get real, real friendly. But we'll drop back in a minute once I've filled this crop right up. All right, so you can see where are we? We've got quite a lot of peas in here. These are dry peas. Um, so what you need to remember is that um, you got to allow for expansion in the seeds when you add water. So we're going to add some water now, which I've just got this little syringe and like a little flexible soft rubber hose that's just like from the irrigation. And I got my water over here, and simply just like this. Actually, what sometimes you can do, um, you can actually sometimes teach these guys to drink water. You actually can. He's at the age where we probably can get him to drink water. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, it might take him a while, but you can get them at a younger age and that to actually drink out of these bowls. You've probably seen it in my videos before. It's definitely the easy way if you can do it. You just gotta just keep dipping their beak in it over a few days until they get the um the whole gist of it. But we'll, we'll track the progress on that anyway. But until they actually do that, I usually just get this shringe um, and then gently just put it in their throat, bang like that. I'll probably give him maybe three of these every time I feed him. And you can just feel the, the peas floating around the water, which is what you want. Um, and then you'll basically just come out in the next hour or two and you'll just check because the peas will expand. So basically what the parents do at this age, they just eat the seeds and come and feed the chicks straight away and give them water at the same time. So we're just replicating what the parents do. Um, a lot of people think at this age your parents will have the food in their crop for a while to soften it, but at this age they don't. If the parents had to do that, these chicks wouldn't be able to um, get the amount of food that they need to grow. So basically parents just go out, get the seeds, come back and feed the young birds. So that's all we're doing. Getting the seeds in there, getting the water in there, letting them soft, get soft. Um, and you can just keep doing that. And you can come back in a couple of hours, give him more water, that'll expand out more. Um, and you can also give him more seeds, just keep topping it up until you know it gets reasonably big out here. Um, you just don't want to overdo it, but you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. It's pretty straightforward. Main thing is just always make sure there's seeds in the crop and it's not hard. You don't want it to be rock hard because that can kill the chick. You just want to make sure it's nice and soft and the seeds that are in there sort of move around quite easily because then they'll just pass through and you'll poop them out, which is no problem. Let's go out and have a look at the other birds anyway. He's doing real good. You can see how quickly he's um, accepting us. So I'm actually just going to leave this video here, um, don't want to go on too much, I'll just leave this strictly as like a basic hand raising one. Um, these guys, will, they learn really quickly, you can put them in a little cage like this, you just give it a bit of a clean. Um, peas, water and then a little bit of grit um, and then obviously you can mix in a bit of corn and safflower and all those things if you really want to. Um, which is good, it's pretty straightforward, they, you know, super easy to look after no problems at all so i hope you enjoyed the video drop some comments down below we will follow this progress of this guy anyway um, i'll keep updating him in all the videos we've got to give him a name see how he goes come on